Hexmate is a post-link stage utility provided by Microchip that can reformat, merge and modify Intel hex files. In this video, you'll see some of its features in action. Hexmate is shipped with the MPLAB X IDE. It is also shipped with the MPLAB XC8 compiler. Both of these products can control Hexmate directly. However, Hexmate can be used standalone, operating on conforming hex files produced by any compiler. Hexmate can be executed using an appropriate command in a terminal. You can also execute these commands as a post build step in the MPLABX IDE. Note that when performing debug builds, the IDE typically deletes the generated hex file before this step. So you must perform a production build for Hexmate to be used in this way. To fully understand certain Hexmate features, a familiarity with the Intel hexadecimal object file specification is beneficial. Hex files are ASCII files containing a number of records, each beginning with a colon, followed by two characters indicating the length of the data argument field, which is present for most record types. A four-character address offset, a two-character record type, and a two-character checksum, which is used to verify the record. A typical record might look similar to that shown here color-coded for clarity. This is a Type 0 data record. This one happens to have 8 bytes of data at address offset 7FF8. The checksum value was calculated over the bytes starting from the record length to the last byte in the data argument field. Each character pair in a record represents a hexadecimal value. The other common record is a Type 1 end of file record which has no data field, hence a data length and address offset of zero. The checksum is FF. A simple but complete hex file might look like this, which contains two data records, the first holding four bytes of data with address offset zero, the next C bytes with address offset one FF4. A type one end of file record appears last. Hex files that contain only Type 0 and Type 1 records are said to conform to the INHX 8M format. With this knowledge, let's now look at a basic operation performed by Hexmate, merging multiple hex files into one. A Hexmate command to perform this task might consist of the names of the files to merge and the dash "-o", -o option to specify the output file. The output file will include the data from all the input files, reformatted and arranged in address offset order. Note that Hexmate will trigger an error if more than one input file contains different data values for the same address. Merging is useful when you create a bootloader and application in separate projects, but you need one hex file to program your device. Hexmate is called by the MPLABX IDE to merge project code with the content of any hex file placed in that project's loadables folder. It is also called by the MPLAB XC8 compiler to merge a C project's output with any hex file specified on the command line. Since the address offset field in data records is only two bytes wide, these can only program data within the lower 64K address range. However, other record types allow higher addresses to be programmed. Microchip tools typically use Type 4 extended linear address records to program higher addresses. The data field in these records holds a 2-byte scaled base address, to which the address offset in any subsequent Type 0 data records apply. A hex file using extended linear addresses might look like that shown. Data in the first record will be programmed to address 0. Left shifting the argument field of the Type 4 record, 16 bits, forms the new base address of 10,000 hex, to which the address offsets in the following records are applied, resulting in data being programmed at 1FF0A, 
and 1FF1A. Hex files that only use the type 0, 1 and 4 records, and a rarely used type 5 start address record, are said to conform to the INHX32 format. Hexmate can be instructed to write hex files in higher formats even when it is not necessary, by using the dash format option. For example, use an argument of INHX032 to insert a type 4 record specifying a base address of 0 even when it is not necessary. Hexmate can modify hex files in many ways. A serial number can be inserted at a specified address using the dash serial option. For example, the command shown will insert the hexadecimal data 0123 starting at the hex file address 1FFE. Something might seem odd, however, if this hex file was used to program a word addressable device, like a mid-range PIC MCU. Instead of the serial value being programmed at the address 1FFE, it will instead be programmed at FFF. This is because it takes two bytes of data from the hex file to program one device address location. Thus the address of a byte in the hex file will be twice that of where it is ultimately programmed in the device. If you prefer to use device rather than hex file addresses with hexmate options, use hexmate's dash addressing option. If the previous command was re-executed, this time specifying an addressing value of 2, then the serial number will be placed at address 3FFC in the hex file, but be programmed to address 1FFE in the device, as specified in the option. You do not need to use the dash addressing option with any PIC18 or 32-bit PIC or SAM device, as these are all byte addressable but you can use an addressing value of 2 for all other devices if you prefer. Hexmate's dash string option can insert ASCII strings rather than a serial number into the hex file. This Hexmate option, along with several others, allows you to specify a trailing value that is placed after each byte of data generated by the option. You might use a trailing value to allow each character of the string to be encoded into a mid-range PIC RETLW instruction, or to accommodate phantom bytes when working with 24-bit PIC or DSPIC devices. Hexmate is commonly used for code verification purposes. It can insert a hash value calculated over data within a specified address range. This hash can be compared to that calculated on the device at runtime to ensure the program image is valid. The dash CK option allows selection of the hash algorithm, such as simple checksums, to more robust but computationally demanding CRC and SHA algorithms. This option has many additional arguments, but those commonly used include the start and end address over which the hash is calculated, the location where the hash is to be stored, the desired hash width, a trailing code, and the CRC polynomial value when relevant. The command shown calculates a 2 byte wide CRC using polynomial 1021 over data from address 4000 to 403F and uses a trailing code of 00 to pad each byte of the hash into a word. A warning issued in this particular example, however, alerts you to one of several common reasons why runtime hash calculations might not agree with those performed by Hexmate. In this case, the address range over which the hash was calculated was not entirely populated in the hex file, specifically from 4010 to 401F. Hexmate has assumed these values are zero, but on the device, they'll probably read back as the default unprogrammed value FF. To correct this, either adjust the hash address range or use Hexmate's dash fill option to fill unused locations in the hex file with the known value. 
This way, both Hexmate and the Runtime Verification Code will see the same data when calculating the hash. Hash mismatch is also caused by processing bytes within memory words in different orders. To correct this, you can either change the runtime algorithm or specify a reverse word width in the Hexmate option. When using the MPLAB XC8 compiler to indirectly have Hexmate generate a hash, the checksum field in the MPLAB XIDE project properties dialog needs to be populated with the arguments to the compiler driver's dash M checksum option, not Hexmate's dash CK option. See the MPLAB XC8 compiler user's guide for more information. When Hexmate modifies hex files, it is useful to generate a log file to see a summary of what has taken place. Use the dash log file option to specify the name of the file. Logs contain a copy of the command line arguments. A summary of the addresses read from each input file. Where additional data was inserted. And what addresses were not specified in the input. It also provides any hash results, and finally, a memory map of the address space in the output hex file, indicating where input data was positioned, where any hash or other values were inserted, plus those areas that were filled. So far we've seen Hexmate process entire hex files, but you can ask it to read only specific ranges of a file by using an R, followed by an address range and a comma before the input file name. The example command shown extracts a device's configuration bits located at a high address in the hex file. Hexmate can perform many other tasks, such as ending data with a value and search for and replace data values in a hex file. And most options can be specified more than once so you can perform actions multiple times with different settings. Hexmate is a versatile tool that can customise the program image stored in hex files generated by all microchip compilers. This video has introduced just some of Hexmate's many features. Hexmate functionality is discussed in full in the Hexmate user's guide. Take your time to explore what it is capable of you're sure to find that Hexmate is a valuable tool for your program development.